All right, guys, thanks for downloading this episode of the podcast. On this episode, we talked to Luther Matty. He plays for the uh, BC Lions in the CFL. Uh, we got some pretty good insight on some stuff. A uh, couple extra things about the CFL we didn't know. Uh, they're pretty interesting, so check them out. Uh, be sure to leave us a review after the interview's over and let us know what you think over at iTunes and a rating. And here we go. All right, everybody, we got another good interview for you. We're sitting here talking to Luther Matty. How's it going, dude? Going good, going good. And uh, how's your uh, how's your Sunday going so far? It's going good. Um, went to church today. Uh, just came from the mall. Had to pick up a few things. Now in South Florida, it's a little bit, a little bit warmer out here. But other than that, it's, it's pretty good Sunday. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's starting to heat up. Uh, at least in Charlotte for us. Yeah. Oh yeah. You guys in Charlotte? Yeah, we're up in uh, we're up in Charlotte. Uh huh. Okay. You uh, are you in South Florida? That's what your Twitter says. Yeah, I'm from Delray Beach. Oh, man, I bet it's hot down there I bet right it's now. it's getting warm. Yeah, it's real hot. It's real, <laughs> it was a little bit cooler last last week, but this week the weather's been real rude to us. Uh, it's been crazy. It's been up here. and down. All, it's been 80 uh, degrees one day and 40 the next up here. It's wild. <laughs> uh-huh. But, uh, well, man, we yeah. were uh, we were doing a little bit of reading uh, here before we got started. After lunch, we were doing a little bit of reading, and we were trying to figure out um, – I was trying to look it up and figure out where you – we saw where you played – uh, college ball at Virginia Tech. Where'd you Where'd you uh, go to high school at? Yeah, so I went to Virginia Tech after that. After the uh, After the draft, I went undrafted to the New Orleans Saints, and I was doing pretty good there at mini camp. And then I tore my pectoral muscle out of full tilt my pec, so they let me go. And then about like nine months later, I signed with uh for the CFL team, the BC Lions, up in Vancouver. Uh, where Where'd you uh, Where'd you actually play high school ball at though? High school. Oh, high school, Atlantic. I went to Atlantic High School. Oh, sweet. So that's yeah. not that's not too. That's about three hours down the road from us. That's pretty cool. What uh, what year did you graduate? Yeah, I graduated twenty eleven. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's not too far. What uh, were you always on the D line? Yep, I played D line. High school, I put a little bit of tight end too, but mostly on the D line, defensive end, D tackle, and uh, blocking tight end. And what made you uh, what made you decide to go to Virginia Tech? Um, we have a little bit of a pipeline from my high school to Tech. We had guys like Brandon Flowers, um, Jaron Osley, Mark Leal, David Clowney, all those guys went to Virginia Tech, and they had success. They had success in the pros, and uh, Virginia Tech just came, offered me and my boy, Daddy Nicholas, and you know they showed a lot of interest. They took a visit. It felt like family. The guys that came before us that I said were from Derry Beach, also they had good things to say about it. So we just took it from there. We committed to Virginia Tech, and we didn't. I was very grateful they offered me that scholarship, and it went real well. We, yeah, we've heard a lot of good things about Virginia Tech. We talked to uh, C.J. Rivas, and he was talking about it. It sounded like a really good experience. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my guy. C.J.'s my guy. He's up at, uh, he went to Marshall. Yeah. We, he was our. He was actually our very first interview ever when we started our oh, podcast. Yeah? Yeah, he, yeah, when we started up our podcast, we uh, reached out to a couple of the guys, kind of like we did you, and he was our very first person to respond and set up a date, so. Yeah, he was. That's where we got our start. Was with CJ. Uh, there we go. See, he's yeah. a good dude too. I hope he gets drafted this, uh, during the draft this year. He's a real good player. Yeah, he real. We we were looking up his stuff when we talked to him. Started watching his stuff. Plus, we. I mean, of course, we seen him on Last Chance You and stuff too. So, um, uh-huh. but he's a yeah. He's a heck of a freaking. He's a heck of a player. Yeah, I hope he gets a shot. I think he's really underrated. I like him. Yeah, he's gonna do good. I was hoping he said that be Tech, but whatever happened, happened. And he ended up at Marshall. He did pretty good. He, pretty, he did pretty good at Marshall too. So hopefully the guys, the scouts, you know, see the potential in him and so, give him a shot. He's a, he's a great player. So whenever you were talking about moving on to the pros, um, what was your? Uh, you said you signed with the. Did you say the Saints? Yeah, I signed with the Saints after the after the draft. Yep. Yeah. How long? How long were you with them? Whenever you signed? I was just there just for minicamp, and I got hurt. I think the second or last day of minicamp, mm. and they had to let me go. And what was it like when they kind of gave you the call and like, like kind of let you know they're going to bring you in and all that? Who's that? Uh, uh, the Saints. The Saints, yes. Yeah, so after the draft, yes. Yeah, so I went on draft and after the draft, whatever they just called me and the guy was saying, "Oh, we're interested in you, and we're looking to invite you to mini camp." They just went from there. Dang, I bet that was super uh, exciting. Yeah, it was. It was really exciting. I was hoping to get. You know, I was projected to get drafted, you know, fifth, fourth, fifth, sixth round, but. I had a few knee surgeries, and then so that just really dropped my stock. Yeah, and stuff guys like didn't that. Really want to take a chance. Yes. Yeah, they didn't want to take a chance on a guy that had you know three, four knee surgeries. So 
when I'm drafted in the Saints, they still took a shot with me. And I was going pretty well, but tore my pec, another injury, so they had to let me go. Man, that's – it seems like there's so many guys always in the draft that have a small injury and it'll make their draft stock drop tremendously. Like, Right. It's so ridiculous. Uh, exactly right. There's so many factors it's in the crazy. draft. Say that again? Well, there's just, we were like just from what we've heard, like there's so many factors in the draft that'll like change your stock and like move you all around and all that. From what we've kind of heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. You go to the combine and then you go to the combine and take you to the uh, you know, to the hospital to get your MRIs and X-rays and things like that. And then based off that, that could, that could really break it. You know, make it make or break you. And I guess my my paperwork from the combine wasn't looking too well, so. You know that got you know that got set across the whole the whole league, the whole thirty two teams. That seen them on my stuff at the combine. They look good, but up my knees and stuff like that. So that's why they all they all you know lost interest in me. So how did it's, it's right. how did you uh, how did you get in contact with the with the Lions? Did they they call you or you reach out to them or? Yeah, so they reached out to one of my one of my guys. He was already he was already at the Lions. Um, Jesse Jesse Coleman. Okay. He played he played running back at Virginia Tech. He was already with the Lions that prior year. And um, I guess they reached out to JC. Showed a lot of you know they noticed that one. Well, actually, they reached out to me right after the right after the combine. They realized not to come right after the draft. When they saw that I didn't get drafted, they gave me a shot. And I was like, you don't know, I, I want to stick around a little bit and see if another team, you know, even though the Saints just cut me six months just to pick me up. So a whole year went on. I didn't kill anybody, and I just you know decided that you know the Lions would be the you know, next next step. They reached out to JC Coleman and JC texted me. And I got in contact with them, and then just things got started rolling from there. That's definitely a good connection to help you get there, for sure. Yeah, uh-huh. It sucked, though, because by the time I got there, they had released J.C., so I didn't really even get to play with J.C. Oh, man, that's yeah. like yeah, so that's like something you're looking forward to, and then you get up there, and that happens. Dang, that's rough. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was crazy. Dang. I like, Dang. I just saw him and let J.C. go. Oh, man, that he, had to be is terrible. Is he playing somewhere uh, right now? Um, I'm not... No, I don't think so. I'm not sure. I don't think he is. Not that, not that I know of, but he's still, you know, waiting for a shot. Well, he's, he's another great, great player. Yeah, somebody needs to pick that just man up. Yeah, he's just small. If you, if you get a stick to get over his height, he'll be a great at this to any team. Yeah, I just – so when you said it, I just pulled his name up. And, uh, I mean, 5'7", 192, that's no different than, I mean, Darren Sproles. And, yeah. I mean, that's, I, I don't, I don't well, understand hey. the problem. Exactly, he's be a return man or something like that. He has great return skills, so I'm not sure what happened, but you know, it's a business. So um, it'll all work out for him. So what's the? Uh, we've talked to a couple CFL guys. Um, let's see, this is you're probably like our fourth or fifth CFL guy. And uh, what's uh-huh. some of the biggest differences from like American football to CFL for people that maybe you know this might be the first time listening? What's what's some big differences you've noticed? The biggest difference, I would say, at least for me on the D line. It's being that yard off the ball, so you know in the um, in the in the, in, the uh, in America it could be right on the ball, not really close to the lineman, but in the CSA got to be a yard off. There's a one yard rule where you can't your your head your hand can't be over one yard close to the ball, and that makes a little bit of difference. It has its advantages and disadvantages. It's an advantage because you know you get it gives you a little bit more time to you know really see the offensive lineman set and what he's trying to do. You can look at the backfield and see what's going on with the running backs and the fullbacks. So it was good in that part. But on the second hand, it takes a little bit longer to get to that guard. So it gets in more time to, you know, get his set ready and get his feet together. So I think for me that's the biggest difference is that yard off and obviously it's a bigger field. Um, my first game I played, I didn't, really, I didn't really feel the big difference as far as the field being bigger. But – it is a faster game. It's a real fast turnaround. So as soon as you know it's three down, so you get a two and out, and then boom, you got to punt the ball, and then you know offense they may get another. They may get a, your offense may get a two and out. They got to go right back on the field. It's like real quick. It's two, it's and three. Offense are not even right exactly, and you may offense to like not get a kick or turn or not kick off the ball. So you know just on a field on the field really quick. So it's a lot more plays. I think. Dang, you're the first American person. Football. You're the first person to tell us that. I don't know how we missed over that little detail, but three three downs instead of four. That's crazy. Man, that's so yeah, fast three paced. Downs, exactly. Yeah, three downs. Everybody throws the ball and you know what I'm saying? So it was a lot of running around and yeah. quick stuff going on. So, so that's we, a big difference and to me. We heard about uh the rec- aren't the receivers they're uh, they're allowed to like get a running start before they pass the line of scrimmage, right? Yeah, yeah, they do yeah, they do get a running start. That doesn't really affect me as much, but for the DBs it's a real 
big chance because they got they're going full speed at you. So you got to you know you gotta gotta be catch quick. up and they're, they're, running, right, they're running a nine route. They're going straight on their flat route. They're right past you, you know, in a hurry. So. And that's yeah. just more pressure on the pass rush to get there sooner, like so you can help the DBs out. Exactly, but then it's, it's, it's frustrating too because on the CFL, the guys throw the ball, put it so much space, you know, the field's a little bit wider and bigger. So what they like to do is just pop the ball in some space and just get guys moving around. So there's a lot, it's a lot of quick passes, a lot of dump balls, you know, little crossing routes and things like that. Probably a little bit harder to do zone coverage with the uh, wider field too, from what we've kind of heard. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh huh. And, want to get guys in space. and my next question, but I think you just answered it, but I just want to clear it up. You said the field's bigger. Do you mean wider? Like it's a, it's wider than a normal field? Yeah, it's wider and like that. So, so I think it's about 15 yards wider. Don't quote me. I'm pretty sure it's 15 yards wider, and I think it's 10 yards longer in the end zone. So, yeah, so the end zone's 20 yards long. Right, yeah, that's exactly right. 20 yards long? Because I know in the NFL it's 53 and a half wide, so we're talking like almost 70 yards wide. Like, yep. That's crazy. And that's huge. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's yeah, wild. Huge. That's a really big thing. The end zone's big. The end zone's huge too. The end zone's twenty yards. Yeah, probably so. DB, so receivers have time to slow down from their run and start. They get if they get in the freaking end yeah, zone. Exactly. <laughs> I yeah, I think I, I think it's fair that they only have three downs because with those advantages, it's kind of like balances out for sure. Yeah, exactly. And then we have an option too. Though. I I ain't, I ain't noticed up until I actually got in the game. I didn't even notice during practice or anything, but. So you you have an option. So say it's a kickoff or you know kickoff return. There's some type of rule where you have an option to decline to return it, and you just you know start off on a 12 yard line or something like that. Yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of a new also. You know what I'm saying? And we also heard something about uh, I can't, I think it was we talked to uh, Joe Craig. I don't know if you know who Joe Craig is. Um, place for the uh-huh. uh, we talked we talked to him and he's a receiver slash return man. He was telling us something. Speak you know you brought up uh, punt return and stuff. He said that you ha- you can't get within five yards of a punt returner, or I can't remember what the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's called the five-yard rule, yep. Yeah. So when guys catch the punt, you have to give them at least five yards. If you're in between those five yards, you have to slag. <laughs> so it's, man, it's it's a whole nother... And like you said, with the fast-paced game, like the three downs plus receivers being able to run, that makes more passing down, so you got to run down the field if it's a completion. It is a super fast-paced game. Like, it's a... Yeah, it's a... It's a exactly. hard, hard real game. Fast. But I like it too because it's a lot of passing, and I like to pass rush. I love pass rushing, so it gives me a lot of opportunity, you know, to get to the quarterback and make some make some things happen. So I like that part of it. Yeah, we we've, we've been watching it more and more uh, since we started talking to CFL guys. We've been we've been watching it, and we like it. Like we're very big advocates of the CFL. Like we like we've been promoting it hard. <laughs> we like it. Yeah, we're we're trying I to find a way to good. watch it. We can't like when the season rolls around. We're gonna try and find a way to stream every every game we yeah, can. Yeah, every once in a while I'll see it on ESPN two or three, but it's kind of hard to find sometimes. Yeah, so I think the I think there's a TSN app. I think that's some guys use that also. The TSN app. It's like a it's like the Canadian version of ESPN. Okay, so that TSN. Also shows, yeah, I'm pretty sure that shows the game. I think they show the games also on there. It's like an ESPN, but it's Canadian. So, so it's called TSN. Everybody listening, stop what you're doing and go download the TSN app and watch Canadian football because t- trust me, it's way better. It's, it's really exciting. Like, And a lot of the people don't realize like how much the NFL is trying to get elements of the CFL because I didn't really realize it until we started talking. They've kind of like tried to bring some of that over, I think. Yeah. Some of that fast sure, pace. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really exciting too. Cause like, and there's a lot of returns because I said it's three down. A lot of returns. A lot of kickoff returns, you know, just guys in space, you know, making people miss, and so that's that's really exciting about. It. I guess there's a lot of throwing too, so you see guys running routes and you know breaking people's ankles and stuff like that. So it's really exciting to watch. Yeah, we've pretty much every guy we've talked to, whether they be offense or defense, have given, and you being a defensive guy, they've given so much credit to defensive players. Like how, I mean, really, how adverse you got to be able to be to play the defensive position in any position. I mean, because it's so. I wouldn't. It's an offensive-minded league, I guess you could call it. But to be a good defensive player in the CFL, you really got to be good. I mean, you really, really got to be good just to really make it. Honestly. Yeah, exactly. There's so much. You know, you got guys moving everywhere. You got all these different formation sets. Uh, running backs here, fullbacks here. You got receivers going back and forth. They start off on one side. They can just run to the other side and do this and motion and all these crackbacks and things like that. So you have to really pay attention and watch film. And the CFL because so many moving motions and smaller rosters, right? Yeah, forty-seven yep. or forty-eight. There's, there's a certain amount of Americans that can be on the roster from what we've heard. 
Yeah, exactly. A certain amount of Canadians, the ratio, so a certain amount of Canadians, a certain amount of Americans. So the guys get to be able to play multiple positions because anybody could get hurt and you may need a receiver to go play some tailback or yeah. you may need a linebacker to play, you know, rush end or something like that. I'm tell them you know how to play tight end. Get you a, get right, you, exactly. Get you, <laughs> line, line you up out wide and get you a run and start. <laughs> go get a right. touchdown. <laughs> I want to play some tight end. It really, so it really, I see it more so with the DBs. A lot of the DBs play multiple positions. A lot of DBs play safety and halfback. So I think the most intangible positions back then, the back end on the DBs, with the DBs, those guys switch from safety to corner to halfback to nickel and all this other crazy stuff. So Man. you got to really be smart as a DB in the CFL. I'm, I really like the CFL. Yeah, and if you only play one position, like because I mean most people are only going to play one unless you're a DB or a receiver or something. You got to be really, really consistent because I mean with the limited amount of roster space, you got to be dominant every single game from what we've heard. Exactly. So exactly. Go ahead. Oh no, I, I go ahead. You you go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying I've seen a lot of guys with like a lot of athleticism, but they just can't you know lock in and get the position on point because it's not like I, like you guys just said it's a little bit harder in a set. So he can move around. You got all these different formations. Either a DB or receiver or defensive lineman or linebacker, whatever you are, you got to be really smart. I've just seen really, really athletic guys that can just do some crazy stuff, but they just can't get the playbook down, so they ended up getting cut. So, um, so what's it like being, you know, how how, how you obviously you like them because you're your team, but how's the environment in the locker room of the Lions? Like, that's, I would say pretty much the Lions are probably the most notable CFL team. Like, I've. I've heard about the Lions ever since I was little, before I even knew the CFL was a thing. I've heard of the British Columbia Lions for a long time, but um, uh-huh. I'd say they're the most notable, in my opinion, in America. What's it like being in that locker room? You know, who are some of the – I couldn't – I honestly couldn't tell you anybody on the team. You know, we couldn't rattle a name off off the yeah. top of my head, but um, uh-huh. like I said, we don't have access to it really good in America, so, I mean, it's hard. I mean right. – Yeah, those guys, they're great guys, man. Um, Wally, he's been a long – he's been with the – Wally Bueno, he's been the head coach of the Lions for a long time. He's got a few, got a few rings with the Lions, so he, you know, he definitely sets the atmosphere. Um, a lot of guys are supportive, and just really, I kind of came in as a rookie. A lot of guys, you know, just giving me the heads up and you know, getting acclimated to the, the environment and things like that. So it's really a team first, you know, really a team first approach. Um, this past year, we, you know, we struggled a little bit. We finished, I think, just just under 500. We had a lot of, you know, a lot of athletes that are all stars. We just couldn't put it all together, so. Somewhat of, somewhat of a rebuilding year towards the end of last year and, you know, coming into this year. So it'll definitely be a new atmosphere. But so far when I first got there, it's a, you know, family first and, you know, just getting everybody acclimated to the system. And a cool arena, by the way, y'all play in. I love y'all's arena. It's the coolest looking thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's real. It gets loud, too. I bet so. It's the coolest. I, I think it's the coolest looking arena. Like the roof, how cool it looks is awesome. With the Titan Tron and everything is really cool. Yeah. I like it too. It, it looks like cool. it, it looks like a balloon or something. Like I can't, I can, I don't know how to describe it. It looks like a like it's literally being held up by air. <laughs> uh huh. It sure do. It <laughs> sure does. Yeah, downtown Vancouver, there's a whole bunch going on. I got the, you got the, um, what's it, Canucks? I think got the Canucks hockey teams over there. Oh, we got a real good soccer team, the Whitecaps, and then we got us, the Lions. So yes. downtown Vancouver's always got something going on. Have you so? Playing in uh, playing in Canada, uh, obviously during the season, have you gotten into hockey more being up there? Because I know it's massive. What's that? The hockey? Yeah, you like you like watching hockey maybe more. That had has spent yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. In, you know what I'm saying? Like spending more time in Canada. Like, has it kind of got you to like hockey a little bit more? Yeah, it did. It did. It did. It did. So my first hockey game I've been to was in Canada. I've never been to a hockey game. It's always been interesting to me on TV, but I never, you know, being in South Florida, I never actually been to a hockey game. So I got to Canada. I think we had a bye week. Yeah, we had a bye week, so we had some more sweet snow on our hands. And I caught the sky train and went to a hockey game. It was like the coolest thing ever, guys, just going at it, you know, just competing. Cause I love seeing competition, whether it's any sport, whether it's tennis or baseball. It's like love seeing guys put forth their best effort, just get after it. And the hockey guys are just going after it real hard and putting these plays together. Because I don't watch hockey, so I didn't really catch, catch on to it at first. But as I kept watching, I'm like, oh, that's a play they're doing. He's like swinging from the left side to the right side and go behind this guy. It's just really interesting. So, Yeah, hockey's always yeah. seemed like really complicated to me. Like, I know that there's strategy, but I can't like understand what exactly it is kind of thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way. It's what, a rough sport. It's a rough sport. What's it kind of like whenever you're like in Canada? Have you kind of adjusted to living in Canada during the season pretty well? 
Yeah, I did. It's pretty, it's, you know, really, really good people. Uh, you know, South Florida guys could be, people could be a little bit more aggressive on our on this side, <laughs> a little bit meaner. But in Canada, people, everybody's nice, and you know, everybody's got this warm, you know, good feeling to them. The weather's a little bit gloomy where I was at, like <laughs> gloomy most of the time. So it's like you go to practice, you just want to go to sleep because it's like real gloomy outside, it's clouds and stuff. But other than that, it's real cool. I love, I love it up there. I look forward to going back next season. Um, how long is y'all season? How many months out of the year? Um, right about six months. So I think the first game is like towards the, uh, I want to say the middle to end of June. And then the Great Cup is like right around Thanksgiving time. Okay. That's yeah. right about six months. Yeah, that's about, yeah, about six months. That's right. Dang, man. Yeah. Canada sounds fun. I want to go to Canada one day. It sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's real, it's real fun. I'm glad I made it out there. I got to see some new things. And it's a super you know, cool experience. I, I mean, it's a super cool experience. Yeah. It is, it is. I didn't really get to, um, I was hurt. I broke my hand during camp this season, so I didn't really, I didn't play much this season, but I look forward to, you know, I'm going to play time next season, actually traveling Canada for the away games, like going to Toronto and all these other places. Yeah, man, well. Uh, oh, I had one more oh. question. I was just kind of, I've been meaning to ask this the last couple of interviews with CFL. Do they have like a, like a annual draft or like, do they, how do they kind of bring the guys in year by year? Yes, yeah, so they have a they have a draft for the Canadian guys, but as far as the NS, as far as the NFL guys or the American guys, it just it just you know hits you up and just pick you up like there. Just ain't just sign it, or they or they do camps or whatever. You just go to a camp, you look good, and they'll sign you right then and there. But as far as the draft, there's no draft for the Canadian for the American guys. So they there is a Canadian draft. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was they draft. You said they draft only Canada guys, right? I just want to make sure I followed yeah, it. Right. You can't yeah, get drafted for, from America. I okay, think. gotcha. Yeah, so there's a Canadian. I mean, you can also get signed as a free agent for Canadian, but there is a Canadian draft out of college and stuff like that. And what you, what you can do is, let's say you get drafted from the Canadian draft, and then you go to camp, and they just feel like, you know, you're just not ready yet. They can actually send you back to school. They can do one more year in the Canadian college and then come back the following year. So that's real interesting also. That is very interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so if you're not, you know, if you're not ready yet, you're not, you don't have enough skills just yet. You just you can easily got drafted in the fourth round or whatever. They actually send you back to your college, go to another year there, and then come back. Do you so get redrafted, or do you just go back to the team that originally drafted you? You go back to that same team. Okay. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Is they is your rights. is Canadian college football uh, played like played like the CFO? Is it you know three downs, uh, yard off the ball, and all yeah. that kind of stuff? Yep, same Canadian rules. Yep, same okay. Canadian rules. I was about to say that might be a hard transition if it's like played like America and then. So these Canadian guys have a really pretty uh, considerable advantage over you guys that like are just going up there to relearn like their kind of w- the way they do it out there, kind of. Yeah, they do. Yeah, because they've been doing it since they were little, so they know all about the rules and one yard off and running motion and everything. The you know the penalties, five yards off the power turn, all that stuff they already know about. Dang. So it helps them a lot. Well, man, we. Uh... Yeah. We don't want to hold up too much of your Sunday. Um, we, I know we kind of set this up almost kind of last minute, but uh, we kind of set it up just a few days ago. But uh, we don't want to take up too yeah, much of your awesome. Sunday, and uh, we appreciate you talking with us. We'd definitely like to do this again sometime like when the season's getting a little closer or something like that. This is definitely one of our better ones. Yeah, that would be good. Appreciate y'all. Whenever, whenever you guys need, need me, y'all be you know, ready to talk. Yeah, we'd love to hear about the camp and stuff. You know, whenever it gets time for camp, we'd love to hear about, you know, little little differences there if there's anything. But – uh, you know, closer right. to time in the season, we'd love to have you back on. Yeah, that'd be good. That sounds good. All right, man. Well, uh, thanks for talking with us today, man. All right, no problem. I'll talk to y'all soon. Yeah, we'll right, catch you on you. TSN next next season. Yep. All right, thank you, man. Sure. All right, everybody. We hope you liked it. We definitely had fun doing it. It was another good CFL one. We know our uh, one of our best supporters, Tim. Uh, I'm not going to try to say his last name. Yeah, we'll miss. I know it's like Renaud or something like that. We'll, we'll, okay, well, I guess we already mispronounced it. I would say we would mispronounce it, but we already did. But, probably. Uh, yeah, he's been big time with uh, helping us out with the CFL, kind of introducing us to how it goes and all that. So I hope he uh, listens, and I'm sure he'll like it if he does. Yeah, we uh, we're we're not kidding. We're really getting into the CFL thing. Like we, I, I really like. I, I really kind of find it interesting. Yeah, it's a definitely an interesting uh, contrast to the NFL. It's definitely. It's cool to watch it with a. You're still watching football, but you get a little bit different idea of football, like a little I, I bit different taste. I kind of feel like the uh, NFL is taking a lot of ideas from the uh, CFL more than people really realize because 
the fast paced gameplay, the protecting or not protecting, but kind of making an offset or uh, offensive type rule set. And uh, some of the key rules, I think, are really kind of – the CFL has had them for, like, a pretty decent amount of time. The NFL is just starting to get that way. Yeah, they're, they're trying to make it a more fast-paced league. and Yeah, I think know. they're really – people don't realize how – if you like the NFL, you might really like the CFL, especially if you like the recent NFL rule changes because the CFL has been like that. Yeah, the CFL has been that way, and it's, you know, offensive-minded, which to the mass general public I think is more appealing uh, to somebody who may not be a diehard fan – offensive minded high scoring games are interesting so uh be sure to check the uh be sure to check the CFL out this coming up uh season he said june it starts usually the you know season starts and wraps up around uh, thanksgiving so i think it was the app TSN is that what yeah, he said yeah it's TSN that's okay, the same TSN. channel if you've like watched some of the uh wrestling shoots with like michael landsberg and all that stuff like with the old wrestling interviews that's what they uh did. i've kind of seen some TSN before so download the TSN app uh I think we said we've seen it on ESPN2 and ESPN3. If you have the uh, you know, right right cable packages, you can watch it. Uh, so check it out. If not, you get the TSN app, and then I'm sure you can stream it online uh, on TSN.com. Or I'm sure they have a website for it. Yeah, definitely go check. If you dig hard enough, you can probably find it. Yeah, not, I mean, it, it I've seen it on TV before. It's just like it's kind of hard to find Like whenever I just want to watch it right th- that second. Yeah, so TSN app, um, check it out. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. We really appreciate all the support and all the – um, you know, just people who retweet and everything, and people who have maybe been more familiar with our YouTube channel, uh, be sure to check out our friend Mui on Twitter. Go to his Twitter, check his Twitter out. He's uh, getting his uh, music career started. He's got a couple singles out, so check him out. Give him a download or uh, however, you, however it tells you to listen to it. I think it's on SoundCloud, so check it out. Give him a listen. Let him know what you think. He had one called, a uh, single called The One, or I think it's just One. One. Just I O-N-E. Like, I, I liked it. I thought it was pretty, uh, I don't want to say catchy because nobody wants to hear this, their song be called catchy, but like, I don't know what else we praise. You put it in your, it gets in your head and you can't stop singing it all day. Yeah. We're not calling it catchy, but we're saying you can't get it out of yeah, your head. Yeah, it's very, uh, I would want to get back and listen to that part, uh, yeah. whatever you want to call that. So definitely you might want to look at it. So check out Mui. You can always find him on our Twitter. We're always interacting with Mui. He's always retweeting our stuff and everything. So check Mui out. Innocent Mui is his name. Check him out. Check out the CFL. Check out the TSN app. And once again, thanks to Luther for talking to us today. We really appreciate it. Hope everyone enjoyed the interview. We'll see you next time.